Funding for this edition of Remember Them with Steve Adubato and Jackie Tricarico has been provided by PSENG, committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. NJM Insurance Group, serving New Jersey's drivers, homeowners, and business owners for more than 100 years. Hackensack Meridian Health, keep getting better. The New Jersey Education Association. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Here when you need us most, now and always. Prudential Financial. Kane University, where cougars climb higher. And by New Jersey Sharing Network. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to Remember Them. I'm uh, here with my colleague, our executive producer, Remember Them, and co-host Jackie Tricarico. Jackie, there's a reason I have this book, uh, this uh, coffee table book on The Sopranos. It isn't just about The Sopranos. It's about the star of that series, and we remember him today, the great... James Gandolfini. <laughs> yeah. So, Jackie, let me ask you something. We're going to talk a lot about uh, Gandolfini, and also we're going through a series of interviews that we did with his castmates, and I believe they're all after James Gandolfini passed. Is that correct? There is one that is before, and that was with um, Steve Scher. Oh, no, sorry, with uh, Vincent Curatola. Oh, that okay. Curatola was in, wow, that was in 2013. But, Jackie, let me ask you something. You Did you see The Sopranos first time around and see James Gandolfini playing Tony Soprano? Did you? I didn't. Back then, HBO was more of a luxury, I think, when it first came out. Um, and I didn't have HBO, but I watched it later on, a few years later. My husband also is a huge Sopranos fan. Um, so I watched it later on. Uh, but it's still been so long that uh, my husband and I were just talking about, let's rewatch it. And uh, I thought it would be really cool to rewatch it as well as listen to this new newer podcast. I think it's been out for a few years now, but um, Tony... Uh, that James Gandolfini's past. Um, you were going to call him Tony Soprano. I almost called him Tony Soprano. No. <laughs> exactly. But who does uh, the my, podcast? So Michael Imperioli and Steve Sharippa, um, they host this podcast um, that's been out and it's, I think it's like 80 something episodes because they go through each episode of The Sopranos and just give you behind the scenes um, information, things that happened and break down each episode. So I thought it would be really fun to rewatch the whole Soprano series um, and listen to that podcast at the same time and get a new take on it. And it's so interesting, you know, Jackie makes that Freudian slip, but she's not the only one because I will tell you that, and, and, and James Gandolfini, born and raised in New Jersey, I believe born in Bergen County, born in Westwood, New Jersey, and uh, grew up in, in Park Ridge, went to Paramus Catholic High School and then a Rutgers connection, strong Rutgers connection. A lot of people, he was so good, so believable that people were convinced they're one and the same, but they were not, Jackie. And himself included. He said in interviews that he really, there's part of Tony Soprano that was in James Gandolfini and parts of James Gandolfini that was in Tony Soprano. And um, you saw that. And then I felt like, you know, after The Sopranos, he did dabble in other projects and he was on Broadway and, and did a few other things. But that whole typecast of, uh, you know, a mafia, a tough guy, he did get continuously typecast like that. Um, I felt like a, a few times maybe he tried to drive away from that, but that ultimately was him. That was that was James Gandolfini. And you know, Jackie, there's a theme that people are gonna pick up when they watch. And let's go through the uh, the people you're about to see. Steven Sharippa that Jackie talked about before. Jackie, do, do you know the character he played in Sopranos? Yep, you say it because you say it better than I do. Bob. Bobby Bacala. Italian names. I always I didn't, say. Wait, you don't have to go like this. It's Bobby Bacala. 
Stephen Van Zandt. Hey, check out our Stephen Van Zandt. People call him Stevie. I, I, for the interview, I called him Stephen. Stephen just, Van yeah, Zandt. I just interviewed him in October 2021, so not too long ago. And check out his book uh, called Unrequited Infatuations. And who did Van Zandt play? Uh, Silvio Dante. Silvio Dante, who yes. was the consigliere. Yes, the consigliere. That's the advisor. He was there. <laughs> And, 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 and he talks about, yeah, and he talks about how his his role on the show evolved um, over time. They didn't really know what it was going to be at first. Um, and then it he ended up sticking on the show longer than anyone anticipated. And you're also going to see, Sharip, uh, excuse me, Stephen Van Zandt. Remember, the other iconic figure in New Jersey and around in the nation, in the world, he's so extraordinary, uh, is... <laughs> who's the East Street Band? Talk about you got Bruce Springsteen, who Stephen Van Zant was tied to, and Gandolfini talks about what it's like, what it was like to be with such powerful figures, where he was, let's just say, the number two person, which he clearly had no problem with. Michael right, Imperioli. And just, sorry, Chris, just to jump, jump into that point, um, when you brought up Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band, right after James Gandolfini's very untimely death at 51 years old in uh, Italy. Yes, in Italy, um, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, they, um, you know, with Stephen Van Zandt, they did a whole dedication performance um, and a, did a whole rendition of Born to Run for Gandolfini. And that was really closely right after his untimely passing. Yeah, and he died, was it was at 51, Jackie? 51, yeah, 51. Also, you'll see, Vince, excuse me, Federico Castelluccio played Furio. He was Tony's driver bodyguard, if you will. And you'll see during that clip of him, um, you know, it was less than two years after James Gandolfini's death when you did his interview. And you can see he still gets choked up when you mention his name and he tries to talk about him. Uh, it still seemed really raw and emotional for him when he's talking about James Gandolfini. And finally, you're going to see Vincent Curatolo play Johnny Sack, uh, who was a rival, if you will, of Tony Soprano. Um, but I would say this, the one theme that you're going to pick up as you watch, listen to these extraordinary actors and the cast, uh, much of the cast of The Sopranos, when they're talking about James Gandolfini, is uh, what, incredibly, what an incredibly generous, caring person he was beyond being this amazing performer, this ma amazing artist, this actor. Wow, was he generous, particularly to his castmates. So... Uh, for Jackie, myself, the entire Remember Them team, we listened to some folks who knew him well talking about James Gandolfini, and Jackie and I will join you on the back end. Remember Them, James Gandolfini. Tell me about James Gandolfini. It's a pleasure. Why? Jimmy's a pleasure. I had met Jimmy, I guess, about six years before the show began production. And just, you know, we used to all hang out downtown in a place called Mary Lou's on West 9th Street. Was uh, Vincent Pastore there as well? Uh, Vinny was there. Tony Sirico was there. Jimmy was there. Uh, a lot of guys that you see on television. That, and uh, very sweet guy, very unassuming. And I recall that when I did the first episode, I had to broker a deal for him with Uncle Junior and Hesh. This was in season one. And I said, oh, my God, it's you. He said, yeah, from, you know, from 3 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. I said, I didn't realize he was in the show. Jimmy uh, has stood up for each and every one of us. We had some yeah. negotiating things with HBO along the way that were not pleasant. So I read. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy also formed a production company where at one point he gave about eight of us from the show a piece of his production company he did not have to do, and that came with a very big check. The man is, uh, you know, without us, he doesn't want to do anything at the time. In other words, he stood up. And I recall very vividly that we were supposed to fly out the next day with our wives and to go to L.A. to stay at the Peninsula Hotel. It was for the, uh, we were nominated for a Screen Actor Guild Award ensemble many times. We won it quite a few times. And the night before, we had all gotten faxes from HBO saying, well, as you may know, Mr. Gandolfini is not negotiating in good faith with regard to the next season. And uh, we want you to just look at the force majeure clause in your contracts. 
So if you can be reasonable, all of you together, and speak with him on this weekend, which we're providing for you. So we all got together in the hotel the next day and talked about these faxes. Jimmy's very cool. He's okay. Next day is Sunday. They send all the limousines to the Peninsula Hotel. We get in. We get to the Kodak Center, whatever it was, in Hollywood. Not one of us stopped for a reporter. Not one of us stopped for a picture. We all stuck together, went into the theater, and took our seats. One, and at the HBO reception afterward, hardly any of the execs even bothered looking our way. We stood with him because he stands with us. So if we weren't going to go to work again, that's life. But for a guy like him, you, put your, you take your heart out of your chest, you put it on the floor. We come to a time in tonight's program where we speak about a very dear friend. And I don't want to be selfish in saying that he was only my friend because he was friends to a friend to many, 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 many people. And the things that Jim did behind the scenes, we'll probably never know. A very self-effacing, humble, really humble man of the people. And I have a strange feeling that Jim were with us in the flesh tonight, he'd probably say, what are you doing? Go home. This is not for me. Uh, some years ago, when Governor Chris Christie appointed me to the commission of the New Jersey Hall of Fame, Jimmy and I were at something in Manhattan, a screening, whatever it was, and uh, he said to me, so how's it going? And I was, I said, good, you know, I'm on a commission and they're doing nice things, they're doing great things. I said, you know something, Jim? You would be the perfect inductee. He said, no, not me. I'm not for that. You know, what, why would they want me? I said, but you know something? I said, you never know what God has in store. So here we are tonight. We're inducting James Gandolfini into the New Jersey Hall of Fame. James Gandolfini, kind of guy. Good guy, man, you know, close friend, good guy. Matter of fact, he was in my movie, Nicky Deuce, that was on Nickelodeon. He flew all the way out just for one day's work. I flew all the way back to L.A., came up to Montreal for me. Uh, last time I saw him was at the premiere of that in L.A., uh, about a month before he passed away. Generous guy, good guy, regular guy. I mean, what can you say? I mean, besides his talent, I mean, he was a really, really good guy. I've told the story where he gave... Uh, 16 cast members, $33,000 a piece. Uh, he called everyone into his trailer. He gave everybody a check, you know, all the regulars a check. He said, thanks for sticking by me. He was going through a contract dispute. I mean, that's a lot of money. You know, you, you know there's a lot of people that made a lot more money than him that didn't do that. You know, he was... At the end, he bought everybody watches. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in watches as gifts. He was a big-hearted guy, nothing like Tony Soprano. Nothing, 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 you know? He was a Birkenstock wearer, and he loved music. Uh, he loved his family. He was with his kids and his wife and his nieces and nephews and cousins and sisters. He was a good guy, man. It's a, it's a shame, just a shame. You guys... Um... Have a special bond? The, uh, you know, the I think everybody did, yeah. I think it became a big family. You know, you were together like 10 years, and uh, I came on the second season, but we traveled together. You know, you were with each other with divorces and kids and weddings, and, you know, I mean, you, you, you're with people for that long. You spend a lot of time together. We spent a lot of time together off camera, you know. Uh, we traveled. We did a lot of personal appearances. We hung together, you know, a lot of us lived downtown at the time. Now everybody's all over the place, but, uh, you know, Jim lived in Tribeca. I lived down there. Uh, Michael Imperioli lived down there. Our attorney lived down there. So we were out and about enjoying, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there was a time, uh, there was a time uh, when the show was on, it was like playing for the Yankees, man. You know, I mean, you were on the biggest show possibly in the history of TV, uh, and it's never going to be that way. You know, it's yeah. not, nothing's going to duplicate that time of your life. You know, that's a once-in-a-lifetime shot. You know, if there was one show, if you were lucky enough to be on a TV show, yeah. and then to be on that TV show, that's like hitting the lottery twice. It's like, I mean, not only am I lucky enough to do this for a living and make a good living, but that show, 
you know. There are these two powerful figures, so many people in your life, so many people you've influenced, and I do want to get to Sun City. But there's James Gandolfini, and by the way, six of your castmates we've actually interviewed so far, um, and so it's an honor to have you with us. And I've, each, I've asked each one of them about James Gandolfini, but the Gandolfini relationship and the Springsteen relationship, similar in any ways, dramatically different, you help us understand, because two giants. Well, I mean, what happened was, my real life ended up ended up being a, a model for the for the fictional characters. Um, uh, you know, I, when I started off, I, I just was my character was running the strip club for the for the family. The bada but bing. The moment, but the, yeah, yeah, the bada bing. I just wanted to say that. So. <laughs> I just wanted to say that, Steve. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> but the role wasn't um, wasn't exactly well defined because you know we had just made it up, right? And and, um, and what's interesting to me, and and I don't even I don't even think this is in the book actually, uh, which I you know I, I'll have to put it in for the for the for the next edition because it just occurred to me. As detailed as, as David Chase was and is, uh, and as thorough and, and, and uh, you know, all, all, all about authenticity, he did not write in uh, the underboss role or the consigliere. You know, now sometimes there's two different guys in, in, in you know, two different roles in, in a mob family. Sometimes it's the same guy. You know, sometimes the underboss is, is the consigliere. Sometimes they're two different guys. He didn't write those parts in. Now, isn't that isn't that fascinating, uh, you know, because here I come in and uh, it's uncertain kind of what my role is. I think he picks up on the fact that me and Jimmy start bonding off screen, um, mostly because I think we're both character actors. You know, he's a character actor. I'm a side man. We both kind of uh, feel more comfortable a little bit you know, out of the spotlight, you know, um, but we both had to ri raise to, you know, rise to the occasion when we were asked to. And I think we kind of bonded on that basis of neither one of us, you know, really needing that spotlight. Um, maybe David Chase picked up on that. I don't know. But by the end of the first season, maybe into the second season, I suddenly my character becomes that that underboss slash consigliere. And and uh, and it wasn't really written in, you know, but it, it ended up being the same role that I had been playing with Bruce Springsteen in real life, my, you know, my whole life. So I knew exactly how to do that. We've interviewed several of your former colleagues from The Sopranos. Um, and one of the themes that kept coming out, and I don't know if I had this right or not, is that there was a, there was a real connection, personal human connection. I don't, I don't know if it was the fact that disproportionate number of Italian Americans, similar backgrounds, but the way they talked about Jim, James Gandolfini was really special. And that, that, that he was a real key to that family and that his loss was not just uh, we lost a colleague, we lost someone who was part of our family oh, yeah. and friend. Is that, that's real? Well, The Sopranos was very unique, and there, there were a couple of things that happened. A bunch of us knew each other from other projects. Uh, there was a lot of people who were in Goodfellas, who were in a lot of the Spike right. Lee movies, which I had done, uh, the, several other plays and movies. I knew Edie, I knew Vinnie Pastore, I knew Tony Sirico, I know Johnny Ventimiglia, I knew Federico Castellucci. I knew a Great lot artists. of these people. Right. right. So now we're all on this show, and it becomes a hit. So this, and, and a lot of us had been kind of in the trenches for many years, trying to, to you know, to climb the ladder of the show business or whatever. So now we all experience this hit together. I did not know Jim, and a lot of us didn't. He, um, but he was the central character. He worked more than any of the other actors, pretty much. And he was also like the captain of the team, you know? He was like the, the Lou Gehrig or the Derek Jeter. And he looked out for everybody, both behind the camera. And, and financially, I heard. Did he fight? And financially, well, he was an extremely generous guy. He, you know, he would find out about, like, some woman who's getting evicted or couldn't pay her mortgage, and he'd send someone over a check completely anonymously. And he saved a lot of people and helped a lot of people who probably to this day never know he did that. Wow. And Strangers, he'd read stuff in the newspaper. And then he'd, he'd tell somebody, he goes, he'd write a check and he'd go, give this to this person. And it would be completely anonymous. He'd, run, he'd do a money order, whatever he did. And to this day, probably these people don't know that, that James Gandolfini paid off their mortgage or paid their rent or whatever he did. He did that a lot. And he, and 
obviously, when you're doing stuff like that anonymously, there's humility that you know that goes with that. James Gandolfini. Oh my God. <sighs> what what can I say, man? Uh, you know, he was a, a gentleman. Why that reaction? Why? Because it's still I still can't believe it. I still can't believe that uh, that Jim is gone, and uh, you know. He was one of the most generous people that I've ever met, uh, in, on and off screen. He cared about all of, his, uh, all of the, f the people working next to him, more so than he did about himself. Uh, he was just a, a phenomenal person, and he's greatly missed. I'm, I'm, I miss him every day. Can't pick up the phone anymore and call him. To watch more Remember Them with Steve Adubato and Jackie Tricarico, find us online and follow us on social media. Many of New Jersey's children have been affected by COVID-19, but now that there is a safe and effective vaccine available for children ages 12 and older, you can help make COVID-19 history by getting yourself and your child vaccinated. Let's end this pandemic together and help all children get back to being kids. Visit hackensackmeridianhealth.org slash COVID-19 to learn more or to schedule a vaccine appointment today. I know that my husband would be so honored and humbled at this prestigious award. He's very proud to be from New Jersey, and out of all the places that he's traveled to or lived in, um, his happiest moments and memories were always from New Jersey. He'd always say that people from New Jersey were honest, hardworking, and family oriented That's exactly what he was. If he were here tonight, he would simply say with a smile, that's Jersey, baby. Thank you. Wow. Um, you got five castmates from The Sopranos, Jackie, talking about James Gandolfini. Let me, let me ask you something. I'm going I'm to come back to Gandolfini in a second. For you, uh, being a longtime, uh, very experienced and successful uh, producer, uh, broadcaster, and who understands this business on so many levels, What's it like for you to research, along with Georgette and the rest of the team, what's it like for you to research people like Gandolfini and find out about them? They're not here with us anymore, but their impact has been great. Yeah, it's fun. And, you know, I think looking at some of these people that maybe I didn't know some things about, but learning more about them and their specific connections to New Jersey, because, you know, we're remembering people that have had some kind of impact on our state. They lived here, they passed away here, they, you know, just were had some type of memorable moments here in New Jersey. Um, and that's one of the key reasons we're remembering them. Um, but, you know, it's just been really insightful to learn some of these other nuances is some of these things and that most people might not know that we're bringing to them uh, to take a different look, a different viewpoint of some of these really amazing people. Yeah, and the other thing about James Gandolfini, again, there's a strong Rutgers connection, there's a Jersey connection. He was proud to be a New Jersey. And uh, the other thing, Jackie, again, one of our partners in this is the New Jersey Hall of Fame. It was a big deal when Gandolfini was inducted into the Hall of Fame, was it not? Yeah, he was inducted um, after he had already passed. Um, and, you know, there was uh, Frank Vincent was there and a lot of his other castmates. Yeah, and and P one second, Jackie. Frank Vincent, who played Phil Leotardo in The Sopranos. I must have interviewed Frank Vincent, who I knew growing up as a kid in Newark. Uh, he also was with Joe Pesci in, 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 in Goodfellas and a whole range of other movies. Uh, no, not in Goodfellas. Uh, yes, he was. I'm sorry. There's a million other ones. Bronx mm -hmm. Tale, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, how about this? What strikes me is that we didn't even we couldn't even get the interview with Frank Vincent. But Frank Vincent was the person who introduced me to James Gandolfini. Right. Well, I, yeah, you started telling me that story, but I didn't hear too much more. You, about you really it. want to hear the story? There's a club opening in New York City back in the day, and the Sopranos were at the height of, of who and what they were. And, and James Gandolfini was, he was an extraordinary star. The club that was opening was called Jilly's. Uh, Jilly Rizzo was back in the day, he was Frank Sinatra's bodyguard. And let's say he had some involvement and some, some connections with certain kinds of people. He had a nightclub in New York called Jilly's. His son opened Jilly's, right? Years later, the new Jilly's. And Gandolfini and the cast of The Sopranos 
they're there. It's a big deal. My wife, Jennifer, and I go there. Were you a little starstruck? Were you a little starstruck? Because I know just how deep rooted of a, a Sopranos fan you are. <laughs> well, I, I was, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to like blow it off like it wasn't. Except here's what <laughs> happens: Frank Vincent, Frank Vincent says to me, Steve, you want to meet Gandolfini? I said, sure. And my wife, Jennifer, comes back, and James Gandolfini's in the back room with, with all these people that we just talked about, and he looks at me and and, and the, they goes, "This is Steve Adubati." He's like, "Yeah, how you doing?" I feel like we cannot end the show without bringing up the extremely um, controversial, controversial ending to The Sopranos. Did Tony live or did he die, Steve? Did he live or die? Well, having been in that booth in Holston's, you can check out Holston's. It's in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Talk about iconic places. That's where James Gandolfini and Edie Falco, right? Uh, they played those roles as uh, for Tony and his wife. And then the two kids, and they're in that booth, and then the music stops. I think that Tony did not survive it. I think that, that that's where it ended, at Holston's. And sadly, and, I feel like there's a bit of a parallel there um, with his untimely death, uh, James Gandolfini's true life and untimely death. Obviously not in the same way, but still very young um, and very. passing away. Yeah, way too young. And you know, the other thing about this, I know we have a minute left, is, is James Gandolfini's son, he was with, he was a very young boy and he was with his dad in Italy. And he winds up being in the sequel, in the movie, uh, The Many Saints of Newark. I mean, Michael, he was a kid when he lost his dad. But I would say this, that James Gandolfini's legacy lives on. For those of you who have never seen The Sopranos, check it out. For those of us who have watched it five or six times, go back and watch the extraordinary work of James Gandolfini. That's the thing. You can always rewatch it. It's a timely show. You can always watch it and uh, always keep it in the back of your mind who James Gandolfini truly was off screen. And he was a great guy and he did so much for so many and never took credit for it. He was the best that New Jersey had to offer. And that's why we remember, we remember him in our series, Remember Them. For Jackie Tricarico and our entire team uh, here at Remember Them, we thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Remember Them with Steve Adubato and Jackie Tricarico has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by PSENG, NJM Insurance Group, Hackensack Meridian Health, the New Jersey Education Association, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Prudential Financial, Kane University, and by New Jersey Sharing Network. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe and by New Jersey Monthly. Many of New Jersey's children have been affected by COVID-19, but now that there's a safe and effective vaccine available for children ages 12 and older, you can help make COVID-19 history by getting yourself and your child vaccinated. Let's end this pandemic together and help all children get back to being kids. Visit HagensackMeridianHealth.org slash COVID-19 to learn more or to schedule a vaccine appointment today. Today's forecast is brought to you by... We are the tippy-top, we're top insurance. We are the tippy-top, we're top insurance. We are the tippy-top, we're top insurance. We are the... Some insurance companies are known for their jingles. Top insurance, please hold. And JM is known for what matters. Outstanding service you can actually count on. No jingles or mascots, just great insurance. And JM, get a quote today. Every day, nearly 2 million customers across New Jersey rely on PSENG to provide natural gas. And every day, PSENG is committed to doing it safely. That includes making sure you know what to do if you smell gas. A natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs. If you suspect a gas leak, leave your home immediately. Get far away, then call 911. Remember, smell, leave, call. Protect the ones you love. Learn more at pscg.com slash gas safety. Hi, I'm Dr. Sharif El Nahal. Did you know that there are nearly 4,000 New Jerseyans waiting for a life-saving transplant? And 67% of those people are people of color. Just one organ and tissue donor can save eight lives and enhance the lives of over 75 people. Let's come together to raise awareness in our diverse communities. Donation needs diversity. You have the power to make a difference. For more information, 
or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit www.njsharingnetwork.org.